Hello, good evening and welcome to another edition of PM Express. Tonight we are on the campaign trail and we are discussing e-campaign as an election too. My name is Stephen Enti and it might be an emerging trend but it appears it is here to stay. Dr. Parkwisi Indium has been at it for some time now, engaging audiences on Facebook. The NDC is also a lot active on Facebook, but MPP's Nana Kufuado wants to outdo them all. The party yesterday officially took its campaign electronic, and fans, sympathizers, floating voters, and all electorates can interact with the MPP candidate on Google Plus Hangouts, Facebook. Follow him on Twitter or view his videos on YouTube. Nanado's social media team is targeting the over 41 million Ghanaians on Facebook and a million others on YouTube and Twitter. According to the MPP, policies intended to transform Ghana can be accessed on Nanado's website and other social media platforms. But can this make any impact at all on this year's elections? What will be the relevance of e-campaign in Ghana's politics in a country where internet connectivity is unreliable? If you have any comments on the matter or questions, you can post them on our Facebook or, or text to 1760. My name is Stephen Enti and I have with me MPP National Youth Organizer Anthony Abayfu Cabo. Thanks very much for your time on PM Express. Thank you very much. And later on, we'll be joined on the phone line by Atul Olsen Apia, who is a blogger, to give us a little more insight into, into this, the effect of this, and how that is likely to impact on the elections overall. So, um, Anthony Cabo, it's great to have you back here again. I mean, this um, Facebook and e-campaign, e I should say, social media platform engagement, it's not new, is it? No, certainly not new. I think that the, the rise of the use of internet across the world, in fact, was um, epitomized by the Obama campaign to a large extent, when you found political parties or candidates running for president or you know, any local election or whatever office. So it's more like you're copying from the Obama campaign or imitating? N not copying from the Obama campaign per se. It's been a, it's been a, a part of any political strategy in, 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 in the current world where ICT has become, is bridging the gap between you know, people, irrespective of where they are, and communication, and of course, information dissemination. I believe that even in business entities, even corporate Ghana, Joy FM, multi TV, radio stations, TV stations across our country are running Facebook pages, internet pages, and finding a much more easier way to interact with their viewers and listeners. And it's the same way that political enterprises are also delving into that field. And so it's not a copy. I mean, it is just a means by which we can get our message out, interact a bit more closely with our people who hitherto may not have the opportunity to interact with people in that way. And so as a new trend in town, and of course, a political party and a candidate that is certainly in tune with, with, with those happenings will certainly want to latch on to that platform. So apart from communicating to people, what I understand you say is that you seek to interact closely with them and then push your campaign messages to them, whether well, they like it or not. Well, it's not about whether they like it or not. It is really about getting a much more closer interaction with people who prospective voters in that way. People want to get to know you a bit more closely. Conventional political strategy will get you going around and saying, my name is Stephen N.T., I'm running for president, and I want you to vote for me. Vote for me yeah. in that way. So you're hoping to get votes in this, this manner also? In one way, you're also looking at making sure that you're informing people about what you intend to do, what your policies are, and also offer them an opportunity to interact with you in a bit more closely. People may not be able to walk up to you and, and ask you a question, but on a Facebook page, people may be able to post questions to you which you want to respond to. I run a Facebook page which is totally crowded now with about 5,000 friends, and it's difficult sometimes 
to, to keep up with a number of people who want to get on onto your Facebook page. And I think that the flag bearer of our party, you know, in 2007, according to him, his own statements, that he was inundated with pressure from her daughters to latch on to that network. And in fact, in, you, you would agree with me that the level of ICT penetration in Ghana has not been radical, but to a large extent, people are gradually shifting onto the internet platform. And, and, and as we speak now, I do conservative analysis has it that well over 1.4 million Ghanaians are latched onto the social media, and many of those are within the age bracket of 18 and 44 years. And so if you are any serious strategist who are looking out to, to disseminate your message or to get people to closely interact with you, you certainly would also want to latch on to that platform. But in saying that also, I do hear people raise the concern about, oh, you're spending a lot of your time on, on the internet and making a look as if you don't have much to do, but you just want to run your campaign on the internet. In our part of the world, that certainly will not be the strategy. The strategy will be multifaceted. Our candidate has been across this country. He's been to 820 communities across the country on his listening tour where people get an opportunity, especially in rural Ghana for instance, who may not be able to get onto the internet, who may not have an opportunity to meet him on a face-to-face -face basis, have an opportunity to engage with him at that level. And so that aspect would have been dealt with. But especially for those of you, and I, mean, I know you have a Facebook page, you chat up with friends, you know, you debate issues. I hook up. You hook up. I throw issues into the public domain and, and I gauge responses that exactly. come in. And, and of course, I believe that, I mean, being the smart guy that I've known you to be, you would certainly pick diverse opinions and that would shape your opinion on a particular issue based on the And that's what the, you, the, the MPP flag wearer seeks to do. Yeah, to a large extent, that is what he's seeking to do. So let's take, for example, my 70-year-old mother who is a cocoa farmer in Suhum Krabwakota somewhere, Abuabu or Mwase. How does she come into this picture? Is she totally... Um, out of this equation? Well, certainly, if you, if you are not literate, if you are not technologically savvy, you're certainly not in this category we're talking about. We're talking about also taking the campaign to you, door to door campaign, knocking on your doors, and engaging people. So you are, by at this, level. you are compartmentalizing your campaign. Exactly. You're looking at a niche market, a niche population, and you're saying that I'm offering this opportunity for you to have a rapprochement with me in that way. Right. And so let's that's what let's get on the phone line and get some detailed analysis from Atul Ozenapia, who is a blogger. Good evening, sir, and thanks for your time on PM Express. Yeah, good evening. Thank you for having me. You, you are a very active blogger, and you have a, a very visible presence on social media. Typically, when you encounter um, Facebook uh, platforms or Twitter or any social media platform belonging to a political uh, party personality or political party uh, itself, how do you engage it? Wait, are you asking how I engage with what a political party figure on I mean, media? Exa exactly that. When you come across a political figure or a political party on your Facebook or on your Twitter, when you come across them, what's your response generally? on what is being discussed. Um, you know, if, if they are talking about issues, uh, the issues, you know, are important to me, I mean, I feel like I want to respond, I will respond. Um, judging by the political terrain in the country now, it's normally not about issues. So it sometimes it spills off in social media. So, you know, depending on you know, what the premise is, I might just bypass it or respond. But I think I also like to say that... Um, you know, I think, you know, for, you know, I think we agree that, you know, social media is not as accessible to many people as some of the other platforms are. So you could almost say that, um, you know, there's some kind of a niche market or there's some kind of uh, um, a group of people who normally patronize social media, right? I mean, obviously, you know, they can read and write pretty well. They can communicate pretty well. They can use a computer pretty well. Um, they know how to navigate, you know, um, platforms that are different. So I think normally sometimes the discourse that happens on social media, 
might not be the same kind of discourse that happens on the traditional media, right? Um, so I think that also kind of shapes some of the discussions that also happen, even in the political sphere. And so do you see this as good or bad when a political party takes its campaign onto the social media platform? Oh, I think it's definitely good, right? Um, because, you know, with social media, there is, I think uh, the gentleman who was talking before me was talking about that, that is a very close interaction with, um, you, you know, with users, right? So you can say something, they can just respond right there, you can respond right there, and can have a healthy conversation. So I think it's definitely a great place, uh, you know, um, message there. Um, and in addition, it's also, um, I, 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 I believe that a lot of people on social media, even if you are youth, I think they are influential youth, right? But if you think of it in this way, especially, um, you know, the Facebook penetration in Ghana alone, is like 1.2 million Ghanaians, right? So, and then mobile penetration is also really high. And if you look at the stats, a lot of people who are on Facebook are browsing on their phones. So you could, all, you could easily say that people in homes who have phones are normally on Facebook if they are young. So I think a lot of people on social media are also really influential. So I think it's a really, really good place to even push a message, right? Because Sometimes these guys are like the breadwinners in the family or they are the educated people in the family and things like that. So it's definitely a great place to, you know, drive from the message. Right, thank you very much. Um, Atul, we will try to re-establish contact with you. Your line is a bit cranky and uh, we'll hang up and then get back to you again and hope that we'll get a clearer line. So, um, Tony, you, you, you heard what um, Atul was saying that Sometimes, I mean, whilst you, you're targeting a particular niche market, you're doing so also bearing in mind that other people are not on the same wavelength. I mean, other people might decide that I, I still have access, but I'm not going to um, go to Facebook or interact, just sit there as passive observers. What are you doing to those group of people who might not necessarily be engaging your message, which you put on the Facebook platforms? Well, um, <clears throat> like I'm saying to you, I mean, this is a multifaceted strategy. The party and the candidate is not looking at, uh, you know, throwing everything to the wind and saying that the campaign for the 2012 election is going to be on Facebook. That's not the point we're making. We're saying that if 1.4 million Ghanaians are latched on onto this network, they deserve to hear what we have. They deserve an opportunity to interact with our candidate. They deserve an opportunity to, to ask questions that plague them. They, they deserve an opportunity to have a closer and a more friendly interaction with our candidate. And our candidate has put that out. But in doing that, we still have a huge mass of people. And I'll give you a clear example. A person in my village in Laura may not have an opportunity to interact with Akufuado on, on the Facebook platform or the social media platform. But Akufuado has taken his listening tour to my community. He's been to seven different communities in my hometown. And in no, most of these places, Akufuado sits back and allows all the scores of people who are gathered to ask and also to tell him about his problem, about their problems. And then he would then be able to respond, have a closer interaction with them. It may not be as close as on the internet where you can easily chat up with somebody and find out where he's, what, what's up with him, how he's doing, where he is, and have you heard about this, and all of those issues. And so it is multifaceted. We're not spending all our time and energy on, on the social media. We're still running on with our campaign. As I speak to you, the flag bearer is in the eastern region. He's visiting rural communities on his hope restoration tour. And in those platforms, he has an opportunity to interact a bit more closely with people. I mean, it is important because the, the, the reason why we think that the social media platform is critical is it allows for participation. People want to participate in the politic. People want to participate in the social discourse going on in our country on critical issues, education, health, infrastructure, job creation, the economy, and all of that. So those are very important issues which people will want to interact with you on especially on the, face, on the social media. But going forward, you also have to be able to devise an effective strategy that will get you 
to have a personal interaction with people. And we're doing that with the with the with the with our listening tour, which we've done, and now with our hope restoration tour. Also, you know, voters want to vote for people who they know. And social media is one of the platforms where they can get to interact very much closely with the people that they know. And so it is important. There's a reason why our candidate has decided that in as much as he launches his website, he launches his Twitter, he launches his Facebook page, and also his YouTube channel where the videos that are being uploaded. And you know that as we speak today, greater interaction amongst people is gotten on the social media compared to the newspapers. Because a, a newspaper headline comes out, and how do I have opportunity to respond? But at least I put a post on my Facebook page, and I get thousands of responses. I get thousands of people who are following me. I have been tweeting with Obama. I've been tweeting with Tony Blair. I've been following, and I know where he is, what he's doing, what his thoughts are, and I can share my thoughts to him. I'm interacting with a lot of media houses across the world, on CNN. So you're hoping BBC. these experiences will bring themselves to bear on the strategy that you have for the MP. Exactly. But in doing that also, we are making sure that we arm people on these platforms with information. Right. Arm people with information. We'll take a quick snappy break and when we return, we'll delve more into this strategy and perhaps get to understand exactly item by item what the MPP seeks to achieve by this campaign, e-campaign I should call it. Stay on.